Hi guys, today I thought I'd do a quick video on Amazon Web Services, Elastic Load Balancers, and Auto Scaling Groups. So this is a fantastic way of scaling in and scaling down your services as needed behind a Elastic Load Balancer or a Load Balancer and be able to customize your EC2 instances as needed using a launch configuration. So just keep watching. I'll show you how easy it is to get started. So let's take a look at setting up a classic elastic load balancer and auto scaling using the web interface. So if you go under EC2 compute services, these are actually was originally developed under EC2. So that's where you're going to find the options or the classic load balancer and the original auto scaling. Adobe did release the newer versions of these, but still most people are using the classic load balancer. So if you click on load balancer on the side there under EC2 compute services, here's our two new load balancers, the application load balancer and the network load balancer and then our classic. Um, if you're setting up a new load balancer in your environment, there might be benefits and according to Amazon, it's cheaper if you take a look at one of the other applications. So if the next tab, I'll show you application load balancer and it's very similar. So demo. I want to make sure you know how about the classic load balancer because that's still what is very widely used. So you can go ahead and name your load balancer. You can choose the default network, so our default VPC, virtual private cloud. So it's essentially picking a subnet. We don't want an internal load balancer, we want external, so that means internet facing. If you choose internal, it will not lose, leave your VPC. Then we want to configure our listener. So our load balancer will be associated with a DNS name. What ports on that DNS name do you want the internet to be uh, accessible to? And where do you want that forward to? So you have the load balancer protocol and then the instance, our EC2 instance port. So do we want to map port 80 on the load balancer to port 80 on the instance? Most cases, the answer is yes, but it is possible that you change your web server default port. That's absolutely easy thing to do. So on your instances, you might want to run your web services or web app um, over port 27,000, but you still want the load balancer listed on port 80 and forward to the instance on port 27,000. So then we'll set up our security group. This is our load balancer security group, not the instances. So we want our load balancer to of course have port 80 open. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. And this is just a warning that we're not using HTTPS, that our web traffic will not be encrypted. Now we're gonna configure our health check to see if our instances are in a healthy state. If it is not in a healthy state and this fails, it will be removed from the load balancers instances that it will be, the load balancer will send traffic to. So it's using HTTP check, it's checking slash on the website. So that is the top level, the main page of the website that you are hosting through this load balancer. Next, you can go ahead and add instances. Notice I'm not gonna add any instances here because I wanna add instance through auto scaling. So with auto scaling, we could automatically add instances in and out. Next, we're gonna give it a tag to what department's gonna use this elastic load balancer. Uh, the staff person that created it, you might want to put your name, initials and name, last name. And now I'll give you a short summary and it'll go ahead and create our load balancer. So you should get the successfully created load balancer. So it is up and running. There is your DNS name. There are no instances behind this load balancer. So if you go to that DNS name, it's not going to load a website for you because there is no web servers running. Next, we have to use auto scaling to configure our instances, our EC2 instances. To create our uh, auto configuration, we have to create a launch configuration, which is essentially saying, how are we going to configure our EC2 instances? And the steps are almost identical to when you actually manually created your EC2 instance. But this is going through and configuring a uh, configuration. It's creating a configuration for your auto scaling. So we're gonna name our auto scaler. And you saw it's a lot of the same questions. What kernel, what um, processor type? We're all staying in the free tier. We're gonna name our launch configuration, my launch configuration. You do spot instances, it might be cheaper in some instances. You could do um, give this um, launch configuration actually uh, access to read S3 buckets. So some websites might have be stored on an S3 bucket. 
and you have to click under advanced settings here because I'm going to give you user data, user data to paste here. And this is going to configure our web server. So it's first doing updates, then it's installing HTTP, PHP, MySQL, and a PHP library for MySQL. So it's installing, it's adding a user group. It's doing all the steps necessary to create a web server and create a default PHP page. The third to the last line with the echo statement, that is a PHP tag. So it's running the PHP info function. And I'll show you towards the end of this lab what it'll print out on the website so you know that your web server is working. Next, we're going to go ahead and configure the storage. So in this lab, it's a very small web server, 8 gigs, the default size should be plenty. We're, this is the security group for the EC2 instance. So you want to make sure port 80 is open because these are web servers. Even though your elastic load balancer port 80 might be open, this still will cause issues if you don't up open up port 80 on this firewall. So you want to make sure the security group has the um, ports open that you need and SSH because you can actually log into your web servers. If one of your instances are actually having issues, you might want to be logged in and take a look at the issue. So once it, all the configuration has been defined, you can go ahead and create a launch configuration. This will actually not actually launch any EC2 instances once it is configured. It won't launch until we actually go through and define our auto scaling group, which is what we'll do next. So now it takes you directly to create auto scaling group. So this is the next wizard. You could actually go in these separately. You don't have to go through the auto configuration, the launch configuration to get into the auto scaling group. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and create, we're gonna name our auto scaling group, my auto scaling group. We're gonna start off, how many instances do you wanna start off with? Now it's really important that you know that these loads will be evenly distributed across your subnets. So if you select two instances, one will be on subnet west 1C, the other one will be on subnet west 1A. If there's four, there'll be on two on each subnet. So it's always, always gonna be balanced as much as the load balancer, as much as the auto scaling group can do. Now right here, it says our classic load balancer. You should be able to click there and if you have successfully created your load balancer, it will automatically place the option for your elastic load balancer by its name that you defined in that box. The next field is target groups, which you'll see used when we do the application load balancer in the next. Other health check, we're gonna do a health check on not the elastic load balancer itself, but on each of our EC2 instances. And the health check we place for 300 um, seconds. This health check is really for when the machine is initially coming up. So as a machine comes up, it won't be defined as healthy or be put into the, um, like the load balancing cycle until it actually passes the health check. And the health check is checking if there is a website available on the web server. So it takes 300, you have a 300 second grace period for a health check before it starts checking essentially. So you could also do, there's a service link role created that's automatically done. And to get a little bit more information, you could always click on the little eye icon and it'll show you some information. Next, we're gonna define a policy on how to adjust our scale. So how many do instances do we want running? So what is the minimum and maximum number of instances do we want running at any given time? And we wanna use the scale, the auto scale group using steps. So this makes it a little bit clearer. So we want to increase our group size when the average CPU utilization is greater than or equal to 90%. So if your processor is running for five consecutive minutes, 90% or greater, then maybe you should add another instance. So it will go ahead and add one instance with 90% utilization, where 90% is less than or equal to CPU utilization. And you wanna give it a 300 second warm up before you add it into the group. Now you want, when do you want to remove an instance? So the load is overall down across all your instances in your auto scaling group. It's less than 90% for five consecutive minutes. So if one of your instances is less than 90% for five consecutive minutes, it will remove an instance from the group. So that will force more of a load on all the other machines. So hopefully that will still maintain that it's all under 
90 percent now it, you, th looking at this you're probably like well it's constantly terminating and provisioning ec2 instances and you're correct it is it's going to constantly as the need grows it will increase the number till the maximum number you allocated as it goes down it will decrease down to the minimum number so if you say minimum is two but they're both under 90 percent utilization it will not continue on and terminate another ec2 instance you can add a notification email also to your auto scaling group. So you can go ahead and click an add and you could add an email address, for example, that will get emailed if there's any issues or um, with your auto scaling group. So, and the person that gets this email will be first um, notified that they've been added to this notification group and you should see an email come to your inbox shortly. The next is you're going to give a tag to your auto scaling group and then we're going to launch. So if this is successful, we should start seeing instances starting to be provisioned. So right now here, as you see, it says zero instances. Right now, two minimum, two desired, two maximum. So that's what currently has. So you wanna wait a good few minutes. Just because it says zero there, doesn't mean it's actually um, not working. So give it a second for it to launch the instances. So you see here, two instances were successfully launched. A few minutes later, I reloaded. Two instances are running because that is my desired number of instances. And then um, two minimum and then four is the max. So you can look at each of these tabs. You can see the policy here and you can always change the policy at any time if you find that you want a um, lower CPU utilization before it um, before you add an instance, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you want to change your desired number of instances, you can go ahead and do that as well. If you look at the instances, you notice it's automatically launch configuration, put it in two different availability zones for fault tolerance in case Amazon themselves are having issues. There's a wide uh, range of monitoring of um, group size, so you'll probably get more data as time goes on. Uh, this auto scaling group's only been on for like a few seconds at this point, so it's really not too much to look at. It sees the default notification and scheduling action, and here is our life cycle. So everything looks pretty good. So the idea now is this has been linked right to our elastic load balancer. So as our load balancer starts hosting out sites, it will pull from these instances. So the load balancer right now only has two instances, but as the load auto, as the auto scaling group increases, the load balancer could have three, it could have four, it could go back to three, go down to two. So constantly changing how many instances are behind that elastic load balancer. So if we go back and look at our elastic load balancer, you could see here that here are the two instances that are in service that have been created with our auto scaling group. And you could verify by going and looking at that instance ID number here in the load balancer and go look in the auto scaling group at that instance ID number and you see they are identical. Now, if you go to that load balancer DNS name, you will see that is our index.php file loading that was written in the user data that was defined when we created our launch configuration. So we created this PHP information page. That's what that PHP info function does. It pretty much prints out the information configuration uh, for the server it's running off of. Now, if you want to change the number of servers running the desired number you could go in there and change it at any time save it you see there's a little icon here i there is an instance starting up if you reload now three instances are in production it says pending so one of them the new one is still coming up so give it a couple minutes before it actually starts joining the auto balancer rotation because right now it's the health check is showing that it is unhealthy so it's not in service. So right here is our new instance. It's still considered out of service because it isn't completely launched yet. The web server, that little script we wrote to in the launch configuration is not complete. Now our service, our new instance is in service. So now it is part of the rotation for our elastic load balancer. Now, if you have any questions about if 
is in fact rotating between, between the three instances. You can go ahead and reload the page. Every time you reload the page, you see that top line? It actually shows an IP address of the web server responding. So if you look at that closely, look at how that IP address is changing. Now, if you go back and you look at your Amazon EC2 instances and you look at the IP addresses associated with the um, instances in our load balancer, you will see that these IP addresses do match. It matches the private IP address to be exact. So if you every time you reload the page, you can find which instance is in fact responding to your um, HTTP request on port 80 to that load balancer. Now, very important, I wanna make sure you guys don't get billed, delete everything you just did. So go in and make sure you delete your elastic load balancers. Elastic load balancers are not free. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.